Hey everybody, Coach here. Thanks for taking a couple minutes, and I appreciate your patience. As you could tell, I did not have a podcast out last week. I concentrated on multiple, multiple shorts for the YouTube channel, and the podcast took it like a champ. Plain and simple. It was just one of those weeks where I needed a little space and I needed to concentrate on something else. Hey, this week we are talking about proper landscape size. You know, all chuckling aside, I guess size does matter. When we were speaking about the size and purpose... For folks landscape so many variables come into play let's discuss this just a little bit and a little more in depth and maybe you can learn exactly what landscape is the right size for you and yours both now and into the future glad you're here let's get rolling hey friends maestro here just dropping a reminder to check out the podcast description for discount opportunities and any important links also if you're listening to this podcast on a specific app please don't forget to rate and review the show it helps us grow and continue to provide these free podcasts you know over the years i have purposely as a means of making a living stumbled upon many folks who are just not the right fit for the landscape they own or vice versa. They wish they had more landscape, or some wish theirs was a lot smaller. Why? Because we as humans, in my ever so humble opinion, evolve as we go through life, and we kind of pick up or drop off catharses and hobbies. We change just about every decade or so on what brings us pleasure, and in some cases, pain. Pain like Mr. T said in the Rocky series. We hate landscape maintenance in our 20s and 30s. Some of us. Because we are cranking. We're we're cranking at work and our vocation. We're cranking on extended educations. We're starting a family and raising kids, etc. Then, later on, in our 40s, we become kind of renaissance people and discover a distinct pleasure about growing something with your own two hands and actually being able to harvest and eat something. Or we really enjoy our move-up home and the neighbors and the neighborhood dictate that, man, we really got to keep this place, you know, to the nines all the time in order to fit in and not get a HOA fine or whatever. Besides, as we get to that age in life, our kids are, you know, we always got to keep an eye on them, right? But they're a little more self-sufficient. They don't require quite as much time. And generally, the landscape does not serve those kids any longer. They're, you know, they're off and running in school stuff with friends. They're driving cars. They're hardly ever home. Maybe they got a part-time job, whatever. And now the landscape may serve kind of a different function. And also for people that are in that age category, jobs and life seem to kind of settle into a, not a rut, but a, a groove that is very well established. And we look to other things to surround ourselves with that bring us pleasure. Sometimes that's the landscape. And then on the other hand, there are those out there that are sick and effing tired of mowing that lawn. And a couple things happen. A, because things happen. You guys have moved and you maybe downsized. Maybe you don't have four kids at home anymore and you took that house that you just couldn't pass up on the other side of town because it's a much smaller yard, a smaller house. You only got one left in the in the nest now and they'll be gone in three years. The other four, they're at college. One's married, one's expecting, etc. Now we go through that uh, that new chapter of our life. But to start, Let's back this life bus up just a bit and help determine what is the right sized landscape for you. And more importantly, why? I think, based on my my professional experience and private personal experience of being a homeowner five and six times over, I think it is determined by life factors that come to bear on you as an individual, you and your significant other, the kids, lifestyle, pets, travel desires, work demands, your skill set, the stage of life that you're in, and the list goes on and on and on. And oftentimes, that is a really hard puzzle to put together. Now, for myself, hey, I was born and raised on a small horse ranch with about two and a half acres around me. In then a very wide open 
spaces of the East Bay Hills in Northern California. I mean, I'm talking about the days when mom and dad kicked you out of the house. He said, don't be late for dinner. And shoot, me and my friends and my brother, we, we were all over the hills hiking and playing and do, building forts and climbing trees and doing everything the kids did back then. Yeah, God, I can't imagine ever letting my kids run quite that free. And that was in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, ugh, man, things have changed. Hey, but back then, space o plenty for a, a young boy, his dog, and all the area to explore off property and on property. But landscape wise, <laughs> landscape wise on this horse ranch that I grew up on was never a show place. Mom and pops never had a desire to be fussy with ornamental anythings. Hardscape, yes, in many cases, hardscape, yes. Landscape maintenance was something that was not high on the weekend to-do list. For my mom, it was all about the horses. And the horses basically ran that place. Therefore, our front pasture and parts of the front yard were, shall we say, uh, poopy. Oh, no! For much of my childhood. So in this case, a lot of space for landscaping, but not the desire or love of manicured, productive pretties for sure. The landscape was tailored around the hobby of horses. I can remember in mom's later years, she hated, and I do mean with a capital H, she hated the place and the demands it put on a much older person. But she would not leave and could not leave as her taproot was there for, shoot, well over 50 years and more. As a result, the ranch fell into disarray and tons and tons of deferred maintenance crept in. You know, when I was a hmm, first half of my 20s, the place was still in good shape. Values were way up. The place was like 1.8 mil. But when she finally sold it many, many years later, she, up there in the Hayward Hills with a five bridge view, fetched a whopping 450K. So sad. It really is so sad. Back on point. Back on point, coach. So when you shop for your home, it's a question now, when you shop for your home, was the landscape a critical part of the decision? Many times the landscape is well over 50% of the property space. But in some cases, in more denser areas, we have become accustomed to sacrifice yard space for the larger house that is needed at the time in our life. As a pro consulting with folks, I often learn that compromise many times is the answer for couples when it comes to landscape thinking. Many times one person wants a yard to apply their love of horticulture, harvest and outdoor fun, while the other person needs no involvement in the landscape of anything in any way. The less, the better. And as the old adage, opposites attract, right? So what is the answer? How does compromise settle the argument cauldron that I have seen literally boil over on several occasions. I think it is easier to have more, more landscape than not have enough. If I was a guessing man, many folks undersize their landscapes when purchasing rather than getting too much. Here's a couple of ideas for you. Larger landscapes offer a few options to folks. Number one, growth and expansion. You know, when you first get the house and you have a, a big yard, maybe you need to retrofit the yard to you, but you have that space to accommodate what you are and who you are at that point in life. And you can expand it. Or a larger yard, you can actually shrink it. You can shrink it by expanding a hardscape or installing sheds or a second garage or any number of things that take up green space. Number two is it offers you the opportunity of variety. You can have a uh, vignettes throughout a larger landscape that you probably can't in smaller smaller landscape areas. Variety for sustaining part of the yard where you have a large vegetable garden, maybe a, a half a dozen or 10 fruit trees which you can harvest throughout the growing season. You can have a play area for the kids, a dog run for doggo or doggos. Maybe it's a big enough place where you can have 
agricultural animals. Like you could have chickens, you can have a horse, you can do all kinds of things. So a larger landscape offers you that variety and those options. Number three, space for entertainment. You know, oftentimes people, uh, <laughs> I have seen lots of times, where they're really entertaining type of lifestyle folks, but they have these dinky little yards and, you know, you invite 20 people over for a birthday party or whatever, and you got this small little patio, a little postage stamp lawn area, and most of the time people disperse throughout the inside of the house, into the garage, out to the front driveway, a little bit in the backyard, and you can see where I'm going with that. So space for entertainment. Number four, play area for the kids. If you have youngins, and in this day and age where parental supervision and kid safety are so paramount, you know, you have a large yard where they can run and play in their toddler, preschool, grade school ages. Man, that's quite a, that's quite a luxury. And you can do multiple things. You can have swing sets. Maybe you have a established large landscape with trees to climb or swings to put in a tree, etc. And number five is you have the space and the ability to inject luxuries. And when I say luxuries, I mean maybe you can put in outdoor living areas with fireplaces and barbecues, or maybe you can put in pools, hot tubs, tree houses, etc. This is what larger yards allow you to do. But oftentimes, number six, it, the cost comes to bear on folks, especially when you're just getting going. Uh, it costs more to install, certainly more to modify and alter because of size scale. It affects so much more square footage. Now on the flip side, let's talk about smaller landscapes. Smaller landscapes, number one, offer you less options, obviously. You can't, you know, if you have a postage size backyard, you can't have a play area, a pool, a hot tub area, a shed, a second garage, blah, blah, blah. You have to really pick and choose exactly what you can have and what you obviously cannot. Number two, it does offer you a reduced maintenance time. It really does. Maybe you go lawnless and your postage size backyard, maybe you don't have a lawn. Maybe you have a large patio and a whole container garden and your time spent taking care of things is whittled down 95%. Number three, it increases options outside of landscape care. Saturday morning does not always mean that you have to get out there and mow lawns and stuff. Maybe you take up another sport, another hobby. Maybe you enjoy weekend travel and the yard does not dictate your time frame any longer. Number four, it allows for exposure to landscape care for newbies at a much slower pace. Maybe you came from an apartment where all you had was a you know, a variegated pothos and a pot near the sliding door next to your deck that overlooked cityscape. And you don't know an apple from an orange tree. And when you have such a small landscape, you can indoctrinate yourself mentally, physically, and skill set wise into a smaller landscape space. Number five, it offers more intimate outdoor spaces that can be reduced to very minimalistic care. You can have a, a single pot with a dwarf Canary Island date palm in it with a lounge chair and you have no care. You water the palm tree every couple of weeks, depending on how much sun it gets. And that is it. Maybe you have a nice outdoor carpet on the patio area and nothing more. And it's the perfect, it's a perfect setup for a person who does not want their time taken and applied to landscape maintenance. Very much so. Number six, the one thing about smaller landscapes is it cannot really be expanded upon except to become denser, either in hardscape items or greenscape items, you know, the plant material. You can only do so much. You can only stuff it. And I have seen stuff 
almost making it a hoarder yard at times with so many different things because the person I was dealing with could have used an acre, but they only had something that was 25 feet deep and 50 feet wide. And they had, every, I mean, fences, house, everything had hanging baskets and hundreds and hundreds of container plants. And you could tell that they would just love to have a hell of a lot more space to apply to their love. So these reasons are often encountered as we go through the upsizing of our homes over the course of a lifetime. We upsize the house because of a growing family, or we upsize both the house and the landscape as we reach our forever home. Then there is a pivot point. There's a pivot point in our forever thinking. Empty nests come along. Health issues creep in. Even folks passing away expectedly or unexpectedly. Now we face a decision, a downsized decision, for the sake of time, convenience, maybe relocating closer to our kids, you know, who are grown and doing their own thing. But now we have a, a single parent in the house now because the other one has left or died. And more complicated issues that come along, you know, as far as divorce, death, and certainly skill abilities. I always relied on George to do the yard. I don't know a thing about taking care of the lawn. So we tend to downsize. We tend to readjust. Never thought landscapes and all that is involved can be so thought out and customized to serve you and your needs. At least at the point you are in now, will be soon or many years down the road, you must, it's paramount to think about when you go house shopping, not only to see how many beds and baths, what type of countertops, but what do you have to take care of out the front and back windows? How will it apply to you? What kind of a person are you? And where is the yard going to serve you today, tomorrow, 5, 10, and 15 years down the road? So, shopping for real estate in this particular case and having the landscape fit you or at least be able to visualize that it can fit you is a challenge. Please remember and bear in mind as you create your Shangri-La of where you will be 5, 10, and 20 years down the road, in designing and installing, consider the future at all times, both in infrastructure, but also in your lifestyle. Think realistically. Be honest with each other as far as who does what and who likes what. You know, <laughs> There is nothing worse to going out and getting a two and a half acre horse ranch and one person wants nothing to do with the horses and the other one is all about the horses. Does that sound like congruency to you? <laughs> no, it certainly was not. Saw it my whole life growing up. Think realistically what your needs are, balanced with what your wants are, and you're also valuable time. It can be a time robber if you don't like it. Or it can be a cathartic release for you to get out there and fire up the mower and make your lawn perfect. To prune out and thin out those fruit trees because the harvest is coming on. Or, hey, you got a dink yard with a couple of containers because every weekend you're in a softball tour team and you're gone for three and four and five months a year. Cool, but consider that. Don't have a one acre yard to take care of if you're on a traveling softball team. Sound about right? I think so. So when it comes to landscape size, customization, and future thinking through life and how your landscape will serve you, not necessarily the other way around. Hey, you know something? As always, I'm available to you through my email, youryardcoach at gmail.com. Online consulting now via FaceTime, Skype, etc. Please take a minute, check out the website, youryardcoach.com. And the Amazon store is always there with a lot of landscape type products. And I do appreciate some of the purchases that have been made recently. I really do. Hey, check me out over on the YouTube channel later on.
it'll be obviously this topic will be visualized quite a bit more and maybe you'll pick up a few more things that you didn't get just from the podcast hey wherever you're going or whatever you're doing i hope you got a little bit of info maybe opened your eyes to some things you hadn't thought about and as always i thank you for your time and to your landscape success i'll see you guys next week thanks bye Hey friends, Maestro here. Just dropping a reminder to check out the podcast description for discount opportunities and any important links. Also, if you're listening to this podcast on a specific app, please don't forget to rate and review the show. It helps us grow and continue to provide these free podcasts. Again, thanks for listening to this week's show and we'll see you right here next week.